Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to design a level based on a texture. Let's begin. Alright, so here's my scene with my character. I can aim and shoot. There are some enemies that are attacking the player. Look at that, he goes, and as you can see, the health goes down. I can attack him and kill them. Okay, great. As you can see in here, we have some ammo pickups. So I got four, and now I've got 20 ammo, and I got a health pickup that boosts up my health. We also have some walls here that the player cannot move through. Okay, so these are all the elements that we're going to use to design our levels. So here is the main script running the game. The code is cleanly set up, so we have these functions in here. We can spawn the player, put him into a position, spawn a health pack, spawn a ammo pack, spawn an enemy and a wall. We're going to essentially draw pixels in a texture and based on the color of those pixels, we're going to spawn various items. So let's begin with a simple texture. So here I have a 10 by 10 pixels texture. Now I'm using Photoshop, but you can do this in any program as long as you can draw individual pixels. So first off, let's start with the whole thing in white. Essentially white will mean nothing spawned in that position. And now we have to define a color for the player position. So let's go in here and let's define the player position color as a pure blue. So let's put it on 25500. So in the hexadecimal 0000FF, that is going to be the pixel that references our player position. So let's, for example, spawn him in here, in this corner. Okay, so here it is, the level texture on the project files. And now that we have our texture in here, let's go into the code and read it. So on the game handler in here, let's first add a field for the texture. So a private texture 2D for our level texture. And we're going to make this a serialized field so we can set it in the editor. So let's go to the editor and drag our reference. There's our level texture and drag it in there. Okay. Now let's also go into the texture import settings. And in here we have to make sure that we can read and write our texture. So we go down here, read, write, enable, and enable it. Also make sure that the texture does not have any mip maps and the filter mode is set to point. We want to read every pixel exactly as we drew them. Now in here, the file that we are reading is a PSD file, which is Photoshop's file format, but you can draw your level anywhere and save it in here. Just make sure that you save your file as a bitmap, otherwise the compression could mess up the colors. So hit apply, and let's go back to the code. Now in here, we need to cycle through the whole texture. So let's make two for loops, one for the width and one for the height. So let's do a for int, let's say x, start off with the width, x less than the level texture dot width. Then inside we do a for int y equals zero y less than level texture dot height. So in here we are cycling through every single pixel on our level texture. Now in order to read the pixels, the best way to do it in terms of performance would be level texture dot get pixels. This function returns a flattened array that contains all of the pixels. The array size is the width multiplied by the height. However, in order to make our code easier to follow, we're going to do it using getPixel and read each pixel one by one. So instead of getPixels, we use getPixel, then we feed it the x and y coordinates. This way our code is less confusing since we don't have to do any index calculations. But if you're implementing this in your own game, make sure you later refactor this code to use getPixels. So for now, when we're cycling in here, the getPixel will return a color, which is the color of this pixel. So store the color. And for testing, let's do a debug.log of our pixel color. Okay. So let's run the code and see what shows up in the console. Okay, our game is running. And as you can see in the console, it is displaying the color of each specific pixel. And if we go up here, we should be able to see a different pixel. There you go, right there we got one pixel with the red in zero, the green in zero, and blue in one, and alpha also in one. So as you can see, this is the blue pixel in between all of these white pixels. And as you can see in here, we have 100 messages, which makes sense since our texture is 10 by 10, so it has 100 pixels. So we are correctly reading the pixel values from our texture. Now let's go back into the code. And in here, let's first convert the color into a hexadecimal value to help us define the values for our objects. To do that, I'm going to use the utils class, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And in that class, I have a function called getStringFromColor, which essentially returns a hexadecimal string from a color object. 
So in here, I'm going to pass in the color and this will return a hexadecimal string for that color. So in the case of the player string, it will be 0000FF. So using that, let's go up here and define a private const string for our player color, which will be 0000FF. So in here, when we're grabbing the pixel color, let's do a switch on the hexadecimal representation and case hexadecimal matches player color, then essentially we are reading a player pixel. So if it does match the player color, for now let's just do a debug.log of the player position. So player position, and let's pass in the X and the Y. So X and then the Y. Okay, let's test and see where it finds the player. Okay, there's the console, and as you can see, found the player position on position 22. So let's go into our level texture, and as you can see, the index starts on zero. So this one is 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0. So 2, 0, 2, 1, and 2, 2. So it does match exactly what we're reading. So now that we have the coordinates of our player, let's actually put him in that position. Now for the size of our level, let's go up here and define another constant. So do a private const float, and this will be our units per pixel, which will be the amount of units in game that represents one pixel in our level texture. So in this case, let's set it to 20F. So in here, let's calculate the coordinates where the player should be spawned. So a vector three for the player spawn position, which should be a new vector three with the X and the Y. And let's multiply this vector three by our units per pixel. Then we're going to spawn the player on this position. So using a units per pixel of 20 and placing the player on 2, 2, essentially the player should be placed on 40, 40. So let's see if that is correct. Okay, here we are in game. And as you can see, the player game object is indeed on 40, 40. And again, we can now go into our texture and instead of placing the player in there, let's erase him from there and place him on the corner. So that corner is on 0, 0, so the player should now be positioned on 0, 0. So let's run the game, and there's the player, and if we check out the game object, it is indeed on 0, 0. So as you can see, by editing our texture in here, we can modify what happens when we run our game. So that's the base of our system. We are essentially reading our level texture and doing something different dependent on the color that we see from that pixel. So there you have it. We'll learn how to create a level texture and read that texture to define a player spawn position. In the next video, we're going to add support for different object types and create an interesting level. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.